Hello and welcome to Salford Now. I'm Charlotte Hintz. And I'm Natalie Snape. Today we're taking a special look at environmental issues in the North West. We will look at building on Greenbelt and a climate change protest. But first, the Department of Transport's 2018 report showed a national increase in the use of public transport, yet air pollution is still a threat, now being recognised as an official cause of death. Cars and vans create the largest percentage of emissions in the transport industry, and HGVs only make up 5% of on-road vehicles, yet generate 25% of global warming emissions. I've been finding out more about public transport and pollution. In Manchester, public transport is essential for people getting around the city. In places such as Piccadilly Gardens, where we are now, many people rely on the trams. Although trams are very popular in cities, the bus service industry still makes up 59% of public transport statistics. I asked some members of the public for their opinions on public transport and air pollution caused by traffic. I do think public transportation is a good idea, everybody pulling together, but maybe carpools or stuff like that, it's like a small contribution, but it does make a difference at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of uh, transport into Manchester, it's better than coming by car and a lot cheaper. Despite the popularity of public transport, everyday road traffic is still adding to air pollution and global warming. In Lancashire, South Ribbleborough Council have begun to put air quality plans in place. I met with their senior environmental health officer, Neil Martin. Air quality is currently one of the biggest public health concerns in the country. This is to, to talk to people, businesses and, and members of the public, um, and raise awareness and get them just think about what they're doing and how they're travelling. The council plans to start duelling main roads to divert congested traffic away from houses and schools. The idea for some of the routes would be to alleviate the congestion on those roads and send them through more industrial areas or more open areas away from receptive locations. In the last 21 years, there have been 37.8 million vehicles licensed in Great Britain, almost 81% of these being cars. Take the bus for short journeys and the train for longer distances. Reducing air pollution needs to be at the forefront of everyone's minds. Passionate campaigners are fighting to stop plans for the Timberley Wedge to be built into new expensive houses and a new local centre. They say the little green belt they have left should be protected. The green belt land runs between Timberley and Hale Barnes in Greater Manchester. I went down to take a look. Nature and I'm wildlife so sorry, has become it. something that future age groups are not promised. Enthusiastic campaigners want the next generation to be able to enjoy the outdoors like they did. However, plans to destroy the Greenbelt land in Timperley running up to near Manchester Airport means this may not be possible. There is no doubt that more houses need to be built. However, the 2,400 homes that are planned to be built by 2037 are not affordable. As Neil Taylor, one of the lead campaigners, says. So there should be social housing for local people. And also, the word affordable comes into this. So, 70%, 7-0, will be unaffordable. The plans are to build 2,400 homes and a new centre including shops, education and health facilities, green spaces and sports and recreation facilities. One local resident, Miss Frieda Jackson, a retired teacher, has had many offers to buy her green belt land, but says she wants to keep it in her family. I know that possibly people will say oh she's just an old woman and nothing you know that you can do mm. i mean i guess even my relatives think that yeah. they think oh well you know you could you'd sell it and get the best price for it you could sell it now and i say no 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 never mm. they don't realize what the history is the third and final consultation should take place in october a protest led by students has taken place outside St Peter's Square. Hundreds took part in the event and it is one of, one of over 1,600 demonstrations taking place across the world today. Our reporter David Poucher went down to take a look. Today in St Peter's Square in Manchester, hundreds of young people came together to fight against climate change. Things are happening and we're not doing anything to stop it. 
After hours in the cold, the young activists took the protests one step further by blocking the tram lines to make their voices heard. So here, um, students have taken serious action. They're standing on the tram lines to fight against climate change. And this is all inspired by Gerda Thunberg, the 16-year-old Swedish activist who has been promoting climate change for about two years. One person equals a massive effect. With over 1,600 protests in 105 countries across the world taking place today, these young people are hopeful that they can make change. They say they will come to St. Peter's Square every Friday until the government takes real action to combat climate change and save our world. With the United Kingdom set to leave the EU on October 31st this year, the debate on how different industries will be affected continues to go on. One industry at risk may be particularly concerning for the British people. George Carden reports. With over 25 million adults in the UK drinking alcohol every week, it is no surprise that people are worried about the impact Brexit could have on the industry. I visited two businesses in the southeast of England to discuss how Brexit could affect them. It's the hops will be the big, big issue. Um, so our American pale ale, we use American hops. They are certainly going to get more expensive. Um, and then we, use, we, we import a lot of German hops as well. So we're looking to try and forward buy as much as we can, uh, to try and sort of stabilise the pricing. Um, we, we get all our hops to a merchant. So um, I know they are feeling, feeling the pressure. If the pound were to fall, then obviously it costs us more to import the capital equipment that we use. Uh, to make our wine, uh, the barrels that we use to store our wine, the bottles that we use to put our wine into. All of those things are imported from the continent. It, inevitably, prices will, will rise as a result of, of Brexit. Uh, but the simple fact that costs are going up um, uh, anyway, but costs will go up as we leave the EU, there will be probably an inflation of price. Uh, the best thing that the taxman and the government could do was actually cut taxes, cut duty on domestically produced uh, product when we leave the EU. The concerns across the industry about the potential impact of Brexit are clear for all to see. Businesses such as Ruffini and Longman are planning ahead by buying in bulk. One thing that is unclear, however, is how much of an effect Brexit will have on the price of beer and wine in the UK for the consumer. George Carden, reporting from Sussex. A private football coaching company run by two brothers it is rapidly becoming one of the growing influences on aspiring young footballers across the region. Adam and his twin brother Jack are co-founders of AJ One to One Coaching, a service that offers high quality training to young players. Mikey Partington has been down to their base in Rochdale to find out more. Two brothers, one project. In the space of 10 months, AJ One to One Coaching have become a household name to kids and parents alike in the North West. Having both had a passion for coaching since the age of 12, they've recently set up the business. I think it was last July when we just said, like, let's make a good go of it, let's set up and let, let's do something. Over 6,000 Instagram followers and a growing YouTube account look good on paper, but it's the personal touches that the boys offer that really make them stand out. One of the massive, massive things that we've put a lot of energy into is creating a, um, an experience for the place. So th there is genuinely no better feeling, we believe anyway, that where a kid comes into you and then you're able to then, you know, coach them and you, you actually see them progress. That feeling is, is, is one, of, one of a kind. As the business continues to grow, there is a need for more coaches. Cara is one of the newest, having known the boys from a young age. You no, know, they're really, really professional. Both of them have different styles of coaching, different styles of delivery. Um, so it's really good to be able to learn off them. Even though they're younger than me, they kind of really tutored me and led by example. What really attracted me was like the professionalism of the business and the way they kind of sold it to me. And you can see their aspirations to take the business to the next level. The boys' journey may have started by picking up cones on a standard grass pitch such as this one, but after setting up a second site in Bolton earlier this week, they have their sights firmly set on the worldwide dream. Hopefully getting to a point where we're able to travel the world with it, uh, where we're able to go into different uh, countries and maybe do different summer camps over there. So for now, AJ One to One may just be a growing story from within the region, but it's fair to say that the sky's the limit for the brothers and their team in the years to come. Mikey Partington, watched it. Easter can be a great time of year for many, with celebrations and of course chocolate. A lot of us value the time we spend with others. However, for children in hospital, this could mean missing out on the fun. 
Chester Scooter Club hosted their annual Easter run to deliver eggs to children in hospital, Lucy Matthews reports. Easter eggs are created and the pub in Hambridge. People may wonder what these things have in common. Well, on the 14th of April, Chester Scooter Club met for their annual Easter egg run. The Grove in His Arms has been the meeting point for the club for over 16 years. It allows motorists to use their hobby as a way of giving back to the community. This year's theme is Easter and riders took chocolate eggs to the children's ward in the Countess of Chester Hospital. The Scooter Club wants to provide fun and promote safe driving whilst going to charity ride out. So, uh, the last couple of years and then before then, it was when I was 18, 19. I don't know, I just love scooters, they're just great. Spirits were high throughout the morning as everyone joined in conversation and showed off their scooters. People across the North West such as Chester Legion, Queen's Park and Ellesmere Port Scooter Club took part. Donations were kindly received off individual motorists and Chester Beer and Wine Company. No, we, we, everybody buys eggs them. and then take them, with them, <laughs> take them in there yeah. and they take them in a big car now down to the Countess. Like. The manager of the pub has said that he would like to continue hosting these events and spoke about making a friendly and welcoming atmosphere for the riders. So you just maybe like you're a bit of that decision, that is easy for everybody. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I'm more than happy to do anything. I, I do everything I do. Members of the club have also said they would like to do more ride outs and mentioned previous events. They do, um, yeah, they do a Christmas one, don't they? They do a toy run to the counter. When it was time, the Easter eggs were packed into a car and everyone set off towards the hospital. This meant that all the motorists travelled together, which really emphasised the teamwork approach. Lucy Matthews, Hanbridge. The charity Brainwave are celebrating their 10th year anniversary for the annual Manchester Duck Race at Spinning Fields on New Bailey Street. The colourful event is always well attended, drawing crowds from all over the country. Our correspondent, Jamila Afzal, reports. To celebrate their 10th year duck race anniversary, Spinning Fields is once again hosting this annual fundraising event for the charity Brainwave. This charity aims to help children who have a range of disabilities like autism and epilepsy. The money is going towards getting therapists who can guide those children to reach their full potential. People have entered the duck race by buying a duck from as little as £1 up to £5,000. So far this year, more than 4,000 ducks have been bought and the winner of the corporate race is going to receive a week's luxury holiday in Europe. Here's what Jamie Marks, a man who has autism himself, has to say. I'm here to support the duck race because I know it supports autism and I'm autistic myself. It means to me quite a lot to try and uh, support my own people and uh, support the good work that they do for us. And now let's listen to why some people decided to partake in today's race. A lot of uh, amazing charities doing work um, with disabled children yeah. and it's obviously hard for parents. Well, I'm um, a teaching assistant that looks after special needs children so I think any support we can get is fantastic but it's also good for the day out. Obviously it's important to support those that need it so it's exciting for me and the girls to participate in the duck race today and the girls have had fun as well. So today has been a fantastic day, families from all over the place have come and joined us. The weather today is rainy and dull with highs of 8 degrees across the northwest. But next week, the sun should hopefully be shining again. Make sure you've got your sunglasses prepared. You can always find more news on our website, salfordnow.co.uk, and follow us at Salford Now. Join us again at 3 pm for more news. But from all the team, goodbye. Goodbye.